It was two and a half years ago that I published my first comic shelf tour video or the first installment of what ended up being a 15 episode bookshelf by bookshelf tour of our entire home library here at For the Love of Comics headquarters. It was a viewer requested tour and I ended up spending between 10 minutes and 45 minutes, I think maybe even one hour on each episode in which I often went through book by book all of the books on a particular shelf. Those 15 videos took me over a year to complete and have been pretty popular with viewers. In fact, a lot of my subscribers have first encountered this channel through one of those. But that series of videos is actually incomplete because there is one small but significant portion of my collection that it doesn't cover. Viewers have often asked me where I keep my single issues because they know that I have some single issues because I've made videos using them. And the answer to that is in a piece of furniture that certain eagle-eyed viewers have observed in the background of a couple of my videos. And that is this piece of furniture, my comics cabinet. This is a custom made wooden cabinet that I got a local carpenter to make for me based on certain specifications to house what I thought would be a very small collection of curated single issues. Of course, that's not the way it goes. It is now full to bursting with things. And I was going to talk a little bit at the beginning of this video about my philosophy about collecting single issues and why I go after certain single issues because they're not really common products over here in India. Trade paperbacks and hardcover collections are far more easy to find. And also, I'm not really a reader of long continuing series, especially when they're being published. But I think I'm going to save that conversation for a different video. Maybe I'll do a live stream in which I chat about it a little more informally. And for now, let's just dive straight into a look at my comics cabinet. This comics cabinet has two rows of three drawers each. Each of these drawers, as we will see, houses two columns of comics. Not a whole bunch of them, about, I would say, a long box's worth. So across these six drawers over here, I guess it would be about 12 long boxes. The comics inside are arranged alphabetically. So right at the beginning, I have Age of Bronze, the excellent adaptation of the Iliad and the Odyssey, I'm guessing because it's not complete yet, uh, by Eric Schanauer. I've talked about Age of Bronze in one of my shelf videos when I was showing the hardcovers, but initially I had trouble getting past the first volume available in hardcovers, which is when I started looking for the singles, which were really easy to get and had superb covers and allowed that sort of chapter by chapter episodic structure of the story to really serve up the cliffhangers. Unfortunately, as I said, issue 33 is the last issue I have gotten. That's all that's been published so far. Uh, luckily, I know how the story turns out, but it is a pleasure to see it in this form and I wish this series would continue. After that, I have uh, oh a couple of issues of Animal Man from Grant Morrison's run, a couple of uh, my favorite issues, including number five, which I have a special episode on. And then I have over here the complete Astro City, or at least complete up to a certain volume. Much like Age of Bronze, I started collecting Astro City in singles because they were relatively surprisingly easy to find compared to some of the trade collections. And also, I really enjoy this series and it's been one of my sort of uh, single issue quests to try to get single issues of series that I really really enjoy have a particular uh, joy to their episodic chapter by chapter formats that have a lot of really good standalone issues but also uh, very nice arcs and Astro City sort of ticks all of those boxes. I've got all of the initial Wildstorm issues, the image issues, everything up to I think the Dark Ages including the specials and then I also started collecting the Vertigo, the newly launched Vertigo series, because I found a bunch of them online in a bundle price on eBay that was very good. But after that, I figured, well, it's going to be in collections and I don't have to have the singles. Of course, I think those collections are also hard to find now, ironically. And then at the end over here, I have Linda Medley's excellent Castle Waiting series, including some uh, books like this one, which is the Trilogy Tour, where you have Charles West, Linda Medley, Jeff Smith and Jill Thompson all writing stories together. They went on tour together and that's one of the issues that came out of it and it contains castle waiting and bone stories from what I remember. And this is just an excellent series. One of my 
least watched videos of all time is the twisting history of castle waiting so video that I made uh, very early in my YouTube channel and that no one was interested in but I'm still glad I made it because it was an interesting little archaeological experiment and uh, this is really a fantastic series a wonderful take on fairy tales and fantasy so that's the rest of it over there so we've got Age of Bronze, Astro City, Astro City Castle waiting on this side on this side, it's, I think, a little bit more motley. First of all, we have some Batman, although I don't think we're done with the A's yet. These are the Batman Year One singles. I love Batman Year One. It's my favorite Batman story, and then that's why I had to have those single issues, which I really enjoy, and I really enjoy before the absolute. This was the only way that one could look at the original colors, which I, I quite enjoy. Uh, I also have the first Batman black and white, uh, four issues over there. I haven't continued with it. I've heard that the subsequent series were also very good, so I should really look into that. There are some other random issues over here, like this Batman annual that features that Clayface story that Alan Moore wrote, and of course the Batman spirit crossover by Jeff Loeb and Darwin Cook, which actually launched Darwin Cook's reboot of uh, the spirit. Uh, it's a good fun issue. Some of the comics I have over here are uh, sort of like this, things that I don't think have been collected anywhere else. Uh, the Fall by Ed Brubaker and Jason Lutz. Uh, it's an unusual combination. I wasn't aware of this, so when I ran across this, I wanted to have it. I like both of these creators. I don't expect to see them working together. And alongside these longer runs, I have a number of such odds and oddities because I'm trying to be a completionist about a creator I really like. In this case, uh, two for one with Brubaker and Lutz. Then we have the Dark Horse American Splendor comics. I love American Splendor. I think I have every issue of American Splendor there is. Uh, this is later on in Harvey B. Carr's series when Dark Horse was publishing him after he stopped self-publishing in these sort of limited story volumes. And then we've got the 55 issues of Bourne, one of my favorite comic series of all time. Here are a couple of ash cans I found that I didn't know existed. And this is the entire series that, again, I have a special video on 55 issues of Bone. The covers of Bone are excellent. I, I think a big charm of single issues are their individual covers. And I think with Astro City and the Alex Ross covers, uh, Age of Bronze and Bone, these are not just excellent series, but they all look really good in single issue form to have all of these wonderful covers. And after the 55 issues of Bone, there is The Age of Reptiles by writer-artist Ricardo Delgado. I did encounter Age of Reptiles first in the Dark Horse Compendium Omnibus, which collected three of these series, but uh, that is a shrunken down version. And when I saw that they were available again for not very much, uh, and in their original full comic sized form, I just had to have them. The artwork really deserves uh, this size, if not larger. Larger. If you're not familiar with this excellent series, I highly, highly recommend it. And right at the back over there are a couple of issues of Buffy. Now moving on to the second drawer. We are moving along the alphabet, so we start with Berlin in B's. This is Jason Lutish's excellent, excellent book that took many decades, I think 22 years to finish. And I loved reading it in these issues that Drawn and Quarterly brought out. Very nice, thick, hard cardstock, smaller than your regular comic size. But because it took so long to put the three books of Berlin together, reading one issue a year of it was the way to read it. Although I've picked up the hardcover volume now, I still want to get the one or two issues I'm missing in this format. Clan Apis, three issues. That is an excellent comic about, of all things, uh, Life of Bees, uh, written and drawn by Jay Hosler. And uh, not enough people talk about this comic, I think. A couple of issues of the Cerberus bi-weekly reprints that I talked about in one of my recent reads videos. Some issues of Conan, which I picked up for the art of Greg Ruth, who's Lost Boy I've talked about uh, on a couple of occasions now. A signed copy of Chu 3 from when John Lehman was here. And here here is Drawn and Quarterly Volume 2. Drawn and Quarterly used to be initially 
a anthology magazine before they started publishing books. And this is volume two, which is sort of golden age comic style with cardstock covers, unlike volume one, in which all the issues were magazine sized. And then the 12 issues of Richard Sala's Evil Eye that I talk about in my survey of Richard Sala comics. Wonderful and superb. Then a couple of issues of 8-Ball that I was able to pick up on eBay. Some of these I think are autographed. Although the larger stories in 8-Ball have been compiled into books, there were a lot of smaller things in these issues that I was curious about, apart from, you know, the the historical factor of having these issues, which are uh, just very formative in indie comics, I think, in the United States. And of course, now there is a complete eight ball hardcover slipcase set, but I think that's out of print as well. Next, we have some issues of Halo Jones being published by Quality Comics in color in the United States, since I'm never going to be able to get my hands on Halo Jones uh, in its complete format in the original 2000 AD, I thought I would try uh, looking at what these uh, reprints look like. Unfortunately, the color is not very good, but it is an interesting way of reading this uh, great comics story. And right at the end over here, I have some Ed Brubaker and Darwin Cook Catwoman, which was coming straight off of their backup stories in Detective Comics. This is one of those things in superhero comics that I quite enjoyed. So I have those issues of uh, Detective as well as the first, uh, I think six issues of Catwoman uh, that they did together. And right at the back over here, copies of Dork by Evan Dorkin. This is a series that I really enjoy. I think it may be available in a hardcover or paperback collected edition now, but when I was uh, looking to read this, this was really the only way to read these stories, so that's why I picked them up. And right back there are some issues of Jim Woodring's Frank, which is something I really, really enjoy. I have a couple of different Jim Woodring Frank books, but nowhere near comprehensive. What is that? Oh, and, and issues of uh, Grant Morrison's Happy. On this side, I don't know why these are in uh, the alphabetical order they are, except they're by Jessica Abel. This is issues of La Perdida. And then we have issues of Daredevil Yellow, which is one of those lobe sale collaborations that I really enjoy. I think Spider-Man Blue is still my favorite, but uh, Daredevil Yellow is a close second. Darwin Cook's The New Frontier. As you can tell, I am a fan of Darwin Cook. Mike Mignola's Dracula. I think these, these issues came with bubblegum cards. Beasts of Burden, and then some random Hellboy, as well as Hellblazer issues. These are issues of a journey, written and drawn by William Messner Lobes, published by Aardvark Vanaheim. And this is an excellent comic. I don't think I've ever run across any collection of these, but I loved, I loved this story and I'm very glad to have them in the singles. If there's ever a deluxe hardcover of this comic, I will be first in line. Next is the Enigma miniseries, Julie Doucette's Dirty Plot, published by Drawn and Quarterly. The full run, issues of The Escapists, and then right back here, the complete Ex Machina. Like Bone, like The Sandman, Ex Machina was a series that I just wanted to have in, uh, in, in the single issue form the entire run. So again, I think it's about 50 or 55 issues and a couple of specials. Moving right along. And our third drawer over here gets into the L's and the K's, I think. Although uh, there's a Monsieur Jean drawn in quarterly free comic book day, along with an Adventures of Paul, also drawn in quarterly free comic book day comic. Uh, Xander Cannon's Kaiju Max, a surprisingly great comic. And then issues of Alan Moore and Kevin O'Neill's League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. This is volume one and two in the single issues. I really, really like this comic. At least I love the beginning of it. The middle of it sags a little bit uh, with some not so great stories, but these issues I think are terrific. This is Little Star by Andy Watson, a comic that I really enjoyed, a gentle comic about parenting. 
then begins Love and Rockets. This is volume two, which is in the regular comic book size. Volume one had 50 issues. Volume two had 20 issues. Superb covers, another one of those in which it's worth getting the singles just for the covers. Although there is, of course, a collected covers volume as well. And one of these days I'm going to bite the bullet and make a Love and Rockets video. Uh, it's an excellent series, although I completely understand that it's not to everyone's tastes. There are also Love and Rockets associated comics like Woe Nelly and Penny Century. Then over here, we have the four issues of Marvels, the classic comic that announced Kurt Busiek and Alex Ross. And then from here to the back are issues of Mind Management, a series I really enjoyed. Matt Kint, I have talked about a couple of times as a favorite creator of mine, especially when he's writing and drawing his own stuff. And Mind Management is a great series. The cool thing about it is that the single issues give you a slightly different experience from the hardcover collections. Every edition of every Madkin book seems to have these sort of extras in the margins and in the front papers, etc., that make them completely worth having in different formats. Over here we have some mini comics. These are issues of Kevin Huizenga's or else volumes one, two, three, and four, and issues of Adrian Tomine's Optic Nerve. These are not his self-published zines. These are from Drawn and Quarterly. A couple of free comic book day issues of Auli, a fantastic children's comic that I've talked about before. And then copies of Acme Novelty Library by Chris Ware. These are sort of treasured copies for me. I was very happy to find these in this format because even though Jimmy Corrigan and other things from them have been collected as separate volumes, there's something quite remarkable of each issue of these that Chris Ware designed uh, himself, or I think he designed the vast majority of them himself. Beautiful artifacts and beautiful comics. And then we have the nine issues of Joe Sacco's Palestine published by Fantagraphics. I did not know that Palestine was originally published in single issues, which is one of the reasons I sought them out. I wanted to see what it was like reading what I think of as a thick tome of a book in this chapter by chapter format. Like Optic Nerve and Evil Eye, here are anthology series by a single creator, which eventually came to contain serialized stories instead of shorter pieces. Till issue 19, I think, Palookaville was published in these comic book formats, and then it switched to being an annual hardcover. And these are just superb comics. I am a devotee of Seth and wanted to collect them in as many different forms as possible. Michel Rabagliati's Paul is another one of my favorites, and I think of Rabagliati very much like I think of Seth. There are a lot of similarities and I enjoy them both in similar ways, although their content is quite different in many other ways. And then over here, another such series, this by Joe Matt. These are issues of Peep Show, also published by Drawn and Quarterly. And right at the very back are issues of Puma Blues, an experimental but wholly original comic. I bought these issues of Puma Blues long before there was a complete collection and that huge thick book actually hasn't appealed to me that much, although it is hardcover and that's nice. I really like having the series in these old singles. 